when you put them together? Like toilet training. I mean, what would you train a toilet to do? Roll over and fetch? <laughs> Maybe an attack toilet would keep burglars away. But I think a dog would be better and definitely easier to walk. <laughs> and then there's fly fishing. Not only would the hooks have to be teensy-weensy, but what would you use for bait? <laughs> and let's not forget baby powder. Do you just add water and presto baby? Well, let me tell you, that's not how it works. I know, because I whipped up a batch with water, and you know what I got? I got yelled at for making a mess. Well, Marty, I'm afraid I don't see any reason why this parole board should grant you an early release, especially since you tried to escape once. If it hadn't been for this little girl, you'd probably still be out there somewhere. Don't remind me. You've shown no signs of reform or rehabilitation. Plus, you've got a book overdue from the prison library. I'm sorry, but your request for parole is denied. Uh, who needs parole anyways? They haven't built the prison that can hold Marty the Midget. Well, that was an easy decision. I mean, just look at his picture. This is clearly the face of a social misfit. Okay, Iggy, let's see what you got. Not bad, but watch this. Ow, hey! Uh-oh, it's that Tubby Tompkins and his friends. Let's get them. Okay, guys, there's three of us and three of them. What do you say we make a stand? Guys? Ah! I'll take that as a no. Guys? Hold it. I have to inspect that garbage. Whoa. Forget it, just dump them. What did I tell you, boys? No prison can hold Mighty the Midget. Calling Officer McNabb. Come in, please. McNabb here. Marty the Midget has escaped from prison. Repeat, Marty the Midget has escaped. Why, that good-for-nothing scoundrel. He won't get far, not with Eagle Eyes McNabb on the case. We better split up, boys. We'll meet back here at sundown. Hey, what you doing? We're hiding. The West Side boys are after us. We're not sure, but we think maybe they got Tubby. Well, then shouldn't you go help him? He's your best friend. Yeah, but at times like this, we prefer to think of him as a casual acquaintance. Well, I ruined my outfit, but at least I got away from the West Side boys. Yes, again, Tompkins. These kids bothering you, boss? Oh, sorry. Our mistake. Gee, thanks, guys. It ain't safe here, boss. We gotta find a place to hide. <laughs> 
I know where we can go. These backyards are the perfect place to hide. I see you're up to your old tricks again, Tubby Tompkins. It's bath time for you, young man. This is great, boss. Candy bars, comic books. We could hold out here for days. Really? Yeah. All right, mister. Let's have those dirty clothes. I'll just put these in the wash. Now, don't forget to scrub behind your ears. Uh-oh. If she washes those clothes, she'll see the prison stripes. I gotta get out of here. All right, Rocco. Got any kings? Rats! <laughs> I'm cleaning up today. Mrs. Tompkins, is Tubby around? He's inside having a bath. Although he should be done by now. That's odd. Where did these come from? They look like prison clothes. Hey, it's Tubby! After him! Yikes! Tubby? Yikes! Uh, hello there. Hey, Lulu. Come in and meet my friends. This is Rocco Clyde and Jimmy the Weasel. Yeah. Hi. We need to talk. What's the big idea? We're in the middle of a game. Tubby, those men are escaped convicts. What? Gangway! Tubby, is that you? Of course it's me. But if you're out here, then who's in there? His name's Marty the Midget, and we just captured him. Hey, what's going on out there? I would have made it if it hadn't been for those meddling kids. It was the prison uniform that gave him away. Once I realized where it came from, I called the police. I don't get it. Why didn't Tubby figure out what was going on? Yeah, didn't you at least wonder why those guys kept calling you boss? Well, I don't know. I figured it was because I just naturally command respect. Oh, brother. <laughs> Wilbur drives me nuts. He's so rich, he can buy anything he wants. But he's also the cheapest person on the planet. And don't ever take gifts from him. He got me a dollhouse for my birthday, but it turns out it comes with a mortgage. I missed a payment last month and got a very nasty visit from G.I. Joe. Last week, Wilbur was kicked out of the Boy Scouts because they finally realized he cheated on all his badges. It took them long enough. They should have figured it out when the sewing badge fell off his shirt. I'm so bored. <sighs> There's absolutely nothing to do in this neighborhood. <laughs> I can't believe my ears. Why, when I was young, I could get hours of fun from nothing but a wing nut and a piece of string. All you have to do is use your imaginations. What do we need imaginations for, anyway? We've got TV. Say, if you're really bored, I just thought of something you could do. Really? What? You can help me clean out the garage. We're bored, not desperate. 
I'll pay you five dollars each. Well, things just got a whole lot more interesting. Hey, a sad clown on black velvet. <laughs> now that's what I call art. Just put everything by the curb and the people from the charity auction will come and take it away. But whatever you do, do not touch the stuff under that shelf. What did my dad just say? Um, I think he said don't forget the stuff under the shelf. Wow, this junk is great. Yeah, I'm surprised you folks are getting rid of all this neat stuff. Well, these golf clubs are the last of it. Are you guys from the Happy Helper Charity Auction? Yep. Sign here. So does helping people really make you happy? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Well, that's done. Let's get something to eat. Lulu, your father just called. He needs his golf clubs at the country club for 2 o'clock. Be a dear and drop them off, will you? Golf clubs? We have to get those clubs back. Let's bring out the first item up for bid. These wonderful golf clubs. Oh, we're too late. We'll have to bid for them. How much money you got? I bid three dollars. Three dollars going once, three dollars going twice, three... Five dollars! Six dollars? Seven! Eight! Rats! Uh... Eight dollars and... Thirty-five cents! Nine dollars! Hang on a sec. Eight dollars, thirty-five cents, a marble and some gum! Nice try. Sold to Mr. Porter for nine dollars. Here he comes. I'm off to the country club to try out my new golf clubs. Okay, Chubby, we're going to the country club. But first, we have to pick up a few things. Eggs? Hola! <gasps> I am Raul, your complimentary caddy for the day. A free caddy? Ooh, excellent. Now, where were we? Ay, caramba! <gasps> These are the mystic clubs of doom. They are cursed. Huh? It's true. A long time ago, these very clubs belonged to the famous conquistador Hernan Cortez. Then one day, an Aztec princess cast a terrible spell. For the rest of his life, Cortez was never again able to make par. That's the most ridiculous story I've ever heard. Now stand back. You see? But how? Like I told you, cursed. I'm telling you, there's no such thing as cursed golf clubs. <laughs> Oops, that's a two-stroke penalty. <clears throat> You're lying for. This is for double bogey. I know, I know. <laughs> wow. Never seen that happen before. That's it. I've had it. I never want to see these clubs again. <laughs> Mission accomplished. I'll just take the scotch tape off this hole and... Lulu, Tubby, you're just in time. I tee off in five minutes. Here you go. Thanks. See you later. Phew. Oh, boy, it sure is nice to have nothing to do for a change. Lulu, can you go into the garage and get my new running shoes? I'm off to the gym. Running shoes? Yes, I think they were under the shelf in the back. Right next to your father's golf clubs. Oh, oops. Alvin always takes things literally. Way too literally. Like in art class the other day, he was told to finger paint. Look what he did. You think that's bad? 
One time his mother told him to make his bed. That morning he built one completely from scratch. There's so much people don't know about Alvin. Like he's really growing fast. It used to be that he had to sit on a couple of telephone books at the dinner table. Then it was one telephone book. Now he just sits on a list of emergency numbers. He's also afraid of heights. I mean, really afraid. He gets dizzy when he stands on a thick carpet. One time we found him passed out in his bedroom after trying on his first pair of wool socks. a birthday present for Miss Feeny. Let's get her a baseball glove. That way, if she doesn't like it, eh, I can always take it off her hands. I don't think so, Tubby. Aw, oh, man. Serves you right. You're not supposed to be eating in here anyways. Aw, oh, come on. A little ice cream never hurt anybody. <laughs> hey, look at that. It's a contest. Guess the number of jelly beans in the jar and win a secret prize. Wow, a secret prize. I wonder what it could be. There must be thousands of jelly beans in there. I'll tell you exactly how many there are. It's a simple calculation, really. First, you estimate the height and the diameter of the jar. Then, you factor in the specific density of your average North American jelly bean. Of course, if these were European jelly beans, it would be a whole other story. Then you apply the Heisenberg uncertainty principle to cover any quantum fluctuations. And there you have it. 14,733,247,952 jelly beans. Give or take a few. Oh, for Pete's sake, Tubby. That many jelly beans would fill up this entire store. Hey, you can't argue with mathematics. I know how we can figure this out. Come on. We'll get a big bag of jelly beans and then find a jar that's the same size as the one in the store. I get it. Then we can fill up the jar and count the jelly beans ourselves. Exactly. Hi, we need a big bag of jelly beans. No, a really big bag. No, a really, really big bag. Ah, that's more like it. Now let's go back to my place to find a jar. Boy, Lulu, you're sure putting on weight. I am not. Now keep still. See anything? Nah, all these jars are too small. not to hold this against me. Chubby, if you don't get me out of here this instant, I promise I will never buy you another ice cream cone. Close enough. This is hopeless. We'll never find a big enough container. Wait a minute. This aquarium is perfect. We just have to drain the water. What about the fish? There. That's the last of them. Wait, where's the big yellow one? I couldn't find a big enough jar, so I gave him to Tubby. Tubby, you didn't. Relax. He's swimming around in the sink. Now let's get this show on the road. That's enough. Now all we gotta do is count them. All right, then. One. <laughs> Two. 
three, four. One thousand three hundred and twenty-two. Hey, there's no more. Well, that's it then. That's the number. One thousand three hundred and twenty-two. We better get back to the store before the contest is over. Mm, maybe we shouldn't have eaten all of those jelly beans. I don't feel so good. We'll be fine as soon as we get our prize. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to announce the winner. Oh, I'll never eat another jelly bean. Uh. As long as I live. Oh, me neither. Our winning entry, which was only off by 15, comes from Miss Lulu Moppet and her friends. See? What did I tell you? It was all worth it. So, kids, can you guess what the secret prize is? Is it a baseball glove? A doll? A Ferrari? Uh, no. It's the jar of jelly beans itself. That's right. 1,337 sweet, succulent jelly beans. And they're all yours. Oh. Well, at least now we know what we're getting Miss Feeny for her birthday. Yeah. I sure hope she has a sweet tooth. Scientists say that in outer space there are places called black holes. That's where stuff gets pulled in and never leaves. Kind of like Tubby going into a candy store. Well, someone should tell these scientists not to look so far from home. We've got black holes right here on Earth, like in our dryer. Two socks go in, one comes out. So now I've got tons of socks, but no pairs. Now that I think about it, <laughs> having your own black hole would be great. I'd put my broccoli in there and my homework and, hey, maybe even Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 